So how do I do number one? What do I do? Fill in the blanks. What does that mean? Awesome. I'm going to write out the equation and replace x with negative 4, right? So I've got negative 4 squared plus 4 times negative 4 minus 1. So negative 4 squared is 16. 16. And 4 times negative 4? Negative, <laughs> negative 16. Minus 1 gives me what? Negative 1. Negative 1. Awesome. Okay, number two, what am I replacing x with? Y plus 2. So that gives me y plus 2 squared plus 4 times y plus 2 minus 1. Who can tell me what y plus 2 squared is? I'm sorry? I, okay, close. There's one more part. Remember, y plus 2 squared is, I want to make sure you can see this. So let me write this down. y plus 2 squared is y plus 2 times y plus 2, right? So I have to distribute, and I get y squared plus 2y, and then distribute gives me 2y plus 4. Does that make sense? Everyone remember? That's why I said you were close. So that gives me y squared plus 4y plus 4. And then I distribute my 4 and I get 4y plus 8 and then minus 1. Now I'm going to combine all my like terms. So I've got my y's and my constants and, of course, my y squared here. So I should get y squared plus 8y plus 11, okay? How many people forgot to do y plus 2 squared row? Did I do something wrong? Uh, can I use this? Yes. Okay, awesome. Lovely. Okay, so number three. Is number three a function? No. Oh, yes. What? Y. I'm going to look at my x's, okay? Is there more than one of the same x? No, therefore it is a function, because that means every x has a single y. If I had, if one of this, say if this was negative 5, that would mean that one x went to two different y's. It's okay if different x's go to the same y, right? It's not okay if two x's go to, if one x goes to two different y's. But it's okay, I can have all my x's go to the same y, that's fine. It just can't go backwards if every x has one y. Does that make sense? She's like, no, it doesn't. So if it doesn't make sense, we can write out my domain and range, right? So my domain is, what is my domain? I'm using set notation, right? So the little curly Q thingies. And in order from least to greatest, so I've got negative 5, negative 4, negative 3, negative 2, and negative 1. And then my range goes from 3, 7, and 8. 3, 7, and 8. So, right, each one of these, my 5 only goes to one of them, right? It doesn't go to two of them. That's what it means. Does that make sense now? You guys remember? So this is a function. Good job. And what do you think the other way? Huh? I was thinking of the other way. Thinking of the other way. Morning, Marco. Morning. Okay, and then we need to answer the four questions. Where's f of 1? f of 1, is that 0? Oh, a half. It's not quite a half. I think I, 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 0.25, I think I put it at 0.25 too. A half would be halfway up through the box, right? It would be right there. So 0.25 would be good. What's my domain? Negative 5 to 3. Okay, great. Is negative 5 included? Yes. Is 3 included? No. No. Beautiful. Okay, where, um, for what x does y equal 2? What? 
375? Okay, so remember this is y equals 2. So y equals 2 is here. What value is x? Negative 5. Why, can I ask why it's not 3? Because there's not a point there. It's an open circle, so therefore it's not 3. Good. And what's my range? What's my lowest point? 0. What's my highest point? 2. Is 0 included? Yes. There's not an open circle there, so it's included. Is 2 included? Yes, because it's not included on this end, right? But it is included on this end, so therefore it is included. Good. Okay? Is everyone okay with that? Awesome. That's what we did last time, right? So now we're going to move on to our new one, linear function slope graphs and models. Yay. Mostly we're going to talk about slope today. Okay, what are the different parts of a linear function, and how do you find them in all the various forms? Lovely. Slope basically is how steep a line is. It's also called the gradient or rate of change. So you'll hear, you won't hear gradient very often, but you will hear rate of change. That's another word for slope. Um, slope equals rise over run. You guys already know that. That's the change in y over the change in x. Change in math means minus. Just so you guys know, the difference. Change is difference, okay? So that's how we get subtract, right? We take my y's and I subtract them. Take my x's and we subtract them. Um, that's how we get the formula to find slope. Uh, there's four different types of slope. I have positive slope, which reading my graph from left to right, that's how we read. We read from left to right in most, in English anyways, right? Left to right. So if my graph is going up from left to right, it's positive. If it's going down from left to right, it's negative. If it's flat, horizontally, like you're sleeping, it's zero. And if I'm vertical, my slope is undefined. Questions? Everyone okay? Okay. And then how do I find the slope between two points? You guys should, I mean, this is another thing that you've done for a long time. Um, and it's a change, again, the change in y over the change of x, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. I subtract my x's, I subtract my y's. The y's go on top because it's rise over run. Okay. Any questions so far? Awesome. I think we're gonna we're gonna do it. We're gonna find the slope between two points. So again, I know that is it up there? Slope is rise over run. So this is y and x, right? I just kind of remind myself. So I'm gonna subtract my y's and subtract my x's. So I put my y's on top, I connect them on top, and I connect my x's on the bottom. kind of helps me. So m is going to be, and it doesn't matter which point I start with. I can start with the first point or the second point. Just pick one. I guess I'm going to start with the first one. So negative 5 minus 3. And whichever one I start with on the top, I have to start with that one on the bottom. So that would be negative 4 minus a negative 8. So what's negative 5 minus 3? Negative, negative 8. Beautiful. And what's negative 4 minus a negative 8? Four. 4. So negative 8 divided by 4? Negative 2. Beautiful. Questions? Right? All we're doing is adding and subtracting right now. Right? Not too bad? Okay. Um... Can I go to the next one? Okay, number two, same thing. Um, rise over run. So this time I'm going to start with my second one just because, I don't know, why not? Negative 21 minus a negative 11 all over negative 8 minus a negative 5. So negative 21 minus a negative 11 is... Negative 10. Beautiful. And negative 8 minus a negative 5 is? Negative 3. Beautiful. So what does that mean my slope is? What's a negative divided by a negative? Positive. So it would just be 10 divided by 3. Because 
three doesn't go into 10, right? And slope is a fraction, so I'm not gonna turn it into a mixed number. I'm just gonna leave it as a fraction. It's already simplified as much as possible, so it's just 10 thirds. Questions? Okay, will you please do um, A through C? Yes, you may. Okay, so here we go. Um, my slope is gonna be, let's see, I think I did, yeah, I did it wrong. 10 minus a negative one, right? Over um, 10, so negative 14 minus a negative 18. So 10 minus minus one is? Ten minus eighteen. Thank you. Woo. Minus eighteen. Great. Um, ten minus minus one. Eleven over negative fourteen minus eighteen. Thirty-two. And does it simplify? No. No. Okay. Great. It does. The y's need to be on top because it's rise, right, over run. Yes, y is always the second set. It's the y in each set. So this is x, x, y, x, y. Because it's rise, slope is rise over run, right? So on my graph, rise. Rise is y, run is x. You okay with that? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Good question. Okay. Next. Uh, so let's see what I get. M equals. I think I did negative twenty. Subtract a negative five over 2, subtract a negative 19, which gives me, what's negative 20 minus a negative 5? Negative 15. Beautiful. And what's 2 minus a negative 19? 21. 21. Is that my slope? Yes. But you can simplify. I can simplify. So what does it simplify to? Negative 5 over 7. Anyone not know how we got 5 over 7? Right? I divided by 3 since they're both divisible by 3. Great. Okay. And, oops, that was interesting. Okay. And um, C. So, again, so slope is going to equal negative 14 minus a negative 10. All over 13 minus 13, which gives me negative 14 minus a minus 10. Anybody? Negative 14 minus minus 10. Negative 4. 13 minus 13. Zero. What's my slope? Zero. Nope. Nope. Uh, undefined. undefined. Thank you. If you take your calculator, I just want you to know, and you do negative 4 divided by 0, it's either going to say undefined, error, usually most of the calculators will say error. Some of the calculators will say undefined. You cannot take something and divide it by into nothing, right? That's what I'm asking you to do. That's what this problem says. It says I'm taking 4 and dividing it into nothing, right? Can you do that? Can I make something disappear? I'm dividing things into groups, right? That's what divide means, separate into groups. Can I separate into zero, no groups at all? No, undefined. So it's okay. like this, not like this? It's like this. <laughs> no, this is a vertical. Vertical is undefined. Mm -hmm. Okay? Okay. So the next thing we're going to talk about is slope-intercept form which is y equals mx plus b. If I said that, you guys all could tell me that's y equals mx plus b. Where m is my slope and b is my y-intercept, right? y-intercept is where the graph intersects the y-axis. 
and my slope we've just been finding. Um, I actually defined y-intercept for you guys with a nice little picture. Any questions on y equals mx plus b? Okay. So what they want us to do is write, what do they want us to do? Find, find a linear function whose graph has the given slope and y-intercept. So I'm going to write an equation. I'm going to put it into y equals mx plus b. They've given me the slope, they've given me the y-intercept, and they just want me to write an equation for it. Okay, so what's my y-intercept in this, in number one? What's the y-intercept? B equals negative six, and M equals negative seven. So my equation is just going to be Y equals negative seven X minus six. Done. All they want us to do. Be able to take the equation, take the information and write an equation from it. So if I was doing number, what number am I doing? Number two, wow. Number two, same thing. Here's my B, right? Here's B. And here's M. So Y equals 25X. The variable always goes with my slope. Um, minus 3. Done. Any questions? Pretty easy, this part? Okay, do those four problems. I'll give you like a minute. I go. So what's a, a? Y equals what? Plus two, beautiful. Okay, and number B. Y equals what? Two fifths x. Two fifths x. Yeah, you don't. You can put the plus zero if you want. You don't have to, right? So it's just two fifths x. Great. And number C. Y equals two plus, plus four. Awesome. And then the hardest one is D. Hmm? Y equals zero x plus one. Nope. So let's let's take a picture. Let's uh, let's take a picture. Let's take a picture. Let's draw a picture of my graph, right? So if my slope is undefined, what does my graph look like? It's a line. So it's it's vertical line, right? And it's a vertical line that crosses what? x-intercept of one, not a y-intercept, uh, x-intercept. So it looks like this. Are we okay with that? So there's no y-intercept, so there's no b. My slope is undefined. So what's the equation of that line? That line is x equals one. No y. x equals one. The trick question, want to know if anyone could get it. We are going to go over how to figure that out, though. Not this lesson. It's a whole lesson by itself. Okay. Every once in a while, there's somebody that knows it. Doesn't happen all the time. Wait, so the y half of it looks like an x is zero. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If the slope is zero, you mean? Yeah. So if I said slope is zero, then it would be y equals one. I would still have a y-intercept, and then it would be y equals one, because then you would say y equals. So if I had y-intercept was say three right and then my slope is m equals zero so then i would say y equals zero x plus three or y equals three does that help oh you can't see that you got to tell me when you can't see it okay does that make sense but if it's a, if it have an x intercept there's no y okay okay good question okay um Determine the y-intercept. So all they want me to tell, all they want to know is what my y-intercept is. Okay? So what's my y-intercept? In order to find out what my y-intercept, it needs to be in what form? Y, y equals mx plus b. Y equals m x plus b. So I need to make sure it's in that form. Is number one in that form? Yes. Yes. So what's my y-intercept? Negative 12. Great. Okay, is number two in that form? No. No. So what do I have to do? I have to get the y by itself, right? So I'm going to get the y by itself. So I'm going to subtract 3x. 
and I get negative 4y equals negative 3x minus 12. And then what am I going to do? Divide by 4. Divide by? Negative. There we go. Negative 4. And you divide by negative 4 everywhere, right? So I get y equals 3 fourths x plus 3. So what's my y-intercept? 3. 3. Done. Questions? Negative divided by negative is a positive. Okay. Awesome, you guys are doing great. Okay, um, what is my y-intercept for letter A? Negative 2. Great. What about for number B? Negative 4. Yes. Anybody have any questions on that? Are we okay? Negative 4? Great. And number C? 1. B equals 1. Beautiful. Anybody have any questions? Do I need to go over? Okay, awesome. So the next one, same thing. We're doing the same thing, only this time instead of y-intercept, they want me to find the slope. Again, it needs to be in y equals mx plus b, right? So I'm going to solve for y. Um, on number one, I'm going to add 3x. Whew, and I get y equals 3x plus 15. What's my slope? 3. Three. Okay, questions? Okay. Okay, what about number two? Number two, sorry, I'm, I'm, I don't have my, I can't see, so when it's too high, you guys need to let me know when it's too high. What am I gonna do first? Subtract x from both sides. Beautiful. And I get 5y equals negative x minus 10. And then divide by 5. And I get y equals minus 2. So my slope is negative 1 fifth. Question. You guys okay with that? You guys, if I ask if you're okay with that and you don't say anything, guess what I'm assuming? Yes. That you're okay with it. Just want you guys to know that, okay? So if you have questions, make sure you ask. Because I will answer the same question over and over and over again. Just remember. Okay, here we go. So let's talk about this so we don't actually have to guess. We can know. How's that? Okay, so for 2, right, I'm going to subtract 2x. And y equals negative 2x minus 2. So my slope equals negative 2, right? So now the next two, my equation is what? y equals mx plus b. So I have a y equals, yes? I just have no x. So what does that mean my slope is? Zero. I have a y equals, right? y equals. I have no x, so that means my slope is 0. If I have y equals and no x, my slope is 0. Okay? Does that help? Because 0 times x is 0. don't have to write it. Does that help so you don't have to guess if I have so y equals? So you're saying it's negative 5 over 0? No, I'm saying it's 0. No. <laughs> 0 over something. You can't divide by 0. It's 0 divided by some number is 0. Okay? Can never divide by zero. Something divided by zero is undefined. If, you're th if you think of the graph, and also if you think of the graph, right, negative five, it's this way. It's a, it's a horizontal line. So it has no slope. Okay? If I look at number two, this is the graph of, sorry, number C. This is the graph of C, right? It's a vertical line. What slope does a vertical line have? Undefined. Okay? So the slope of this one is undefined. So sometimes it helps if you imagine what the graph looks like if there's no x there. Does that help a little bit? So if you imagine what the graph looks like, this says y equals negative 5. That means my graph is going to go through y equals negative 5. This one says x equals negative 2. This way. This way. This way. 
Okay? I know, a little confusing, right? We're spending a whole lesson on vertical and horizontal lines. Okay? <laughs> One whole lesson, vertical and horizontal lines. Okay. Okay, uh, here we go. So now we're going to graph. You guys should already know, right? Most, I think some of you guys, when we did the Kahoot and we did... Uh... No, you guys didn't do that part. So when we did the Kahoot, most of you guys did okay on this part. So what am I going to do first? In order to graph it, what do I need to do? I need to put it into y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to subtract 2x. And I get 3y equals negative 2x plus 6. And then I'm going to divide by 3. And y is going to be equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 2. So my slope is negative 2 thirds. And my y intercept is 2. So now when I'm going to graph this, where do I start at? Two. Two. On which axis? On the y-axis. I'm going to start at my y-intercept, and I'm going to start at positive two, so I'm going to put a point there. Okay? Now I start at that point. I don't start at zero, zero. But somebody asked me that the other day. Do I start at zero, zero? No, I start at my y-intercept. You start at your y-intercept, okay? And I'm going to use my slope. My slope says I'm going to go down two or down two and forward three. This says down because it's negative, and this is forward because it's positive. F O forward. Sorry, I can't spell and talk at the same time, and I probably still spelled it wrong. Forward four. There should be an R in there. Forward. 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 Okay. Yeah, I can't spell. Let me let me fix that because. Miss, Miss Gilpin's going to make fun of me when I make mistakes. Forward. Okay. So I'm going to go down two and forward three. So I'm going to go down two, one, two, three. And I can keep doing that forever. Because the line goes on forever, right? Or until I run out of graph space, like I just did, right? But I can also go the opposite direction, right? Because... It could also be, my slope could also be positive 2 over negative 3. Is that still a negative slope? Yeah, yeah so now I could go up 2 and back 3. 1, 2, 3. And I could do that forever. Or until I run out of graph space. As long as it's all on the same line. Beautiful. And then I try to draw a straight line. Ooh, that one wasn't too bad. Okay, questions? Not too bad? Yeah. Yes. Okay, next one. Same thing. We're going to do the same thing, right? Can you see it? Beautiful. Okay, uh, subtract 5x. Gives me negative 4y equals negative 5x plus 4. Divide by negative 4. So y is going to equal... 5 fourths x minus 1, where my slope is 5 fourths, and my y-intercept is negative 1. Beautiful, right? So this time I'm going to start at negative 1. And since they're both positive, I'm going to go up and forward in the positive direction, right? Up and forward. So up 5, forward 4. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4. And I just count, and I don't think I can go another section. So I'm going to go backwards, which is down and back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4. And I've got my points, and definitely not going to draw a straight line this time. Oh, not too bad. And there's my line. Okay, not too bad. I think there's, um, I don't know, is it four? Yep. Four problems. Go for it. Okay. Do I start now? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
you want me to solve yeah, it or just write it? Okay. Yep.